and pi to 5,000 decimal points. Gum earns his money as a mind coach, advising National League teams and top managers on how to improve their memory and concentration. Researchers now aim to catch up with this walking calculator at Magdeburg University, where a high-performance scanner will record Gam's brain activity while he's calculating. Using the MRI machine, neuroscientists Henning Scheich and Thorsten Fehr can measure with millimetric precision when certain particular neurons are activated. The activated regions consume more oxygen and sugar, so more blood will temporarily flow into them. As GAM calculates, the scanner will precisely record these changes in the brain's metabolism. Specialists in New York will animate the data provided by the scanner into 3D images, exclusively for this film. The modern technologies now allow us for the first time to explore the biology of these behaviors, to actually see if we can find differences in the physiology, the blood flow, the brain connections that make one brain able to remember uh, things like this for 20 years and other people's brains to not remember even for minutes to hours, such as in Alzheimer's disease. And so by looking at these extremes, it may unlock the keys to memory itself. We tend to think of ourselves as being born with a blank disc and a beautiful piece of machinery called the brain, and we become whatever we put on the blank disc. That, that is what we are. But in order to explain the prodigious savant, you have to answer the question, how can somebody know something that they've never learned? January 1st, 1957. Tuesday? That's right. March 28th, 1957. Thursday? That's right. Mm. May 30th, 1957. Thursday? That's right. March 27th, 1958. Thursday? That's right. June 10th, 1954. Thursday? That's right. September 22nd, 1954. Wednesday. That's it. December 4th, 1954. Sunday? No, it was a Saturday. How about June 1st, Orlando Sorel is a so-called acquired savant, the term for those who are not born savants, but who suddenly become one through an accident, an epileptic fit, or a stroke. As a 10-year-old, Virginian Orlando Sorel was a very ordinary boy. But on the 15th of January, 1979, he was hit on the head by a baseball, so hard he lost consciousness. Since then, Orlando knows the day of the week and the weather on every date after his accident, without thinking about it. Only now, at our test at the National Institute of Health in Washington, does it become clear that Orlando's knowledge of the dates before his accident is also improving, without any practice at all. I don't really know of a savant who has done that before, has been able to report the events with the dates in the same way. So that's, to me, what's most impressive. August 27th, 1988. Saturday. That's right. I was hanging out that night. How about July 4th, 1989? Tuesday. July 1st, Saturday, I was at a friend's house cook. I did cook barbecue chicken. They were part of chicken and legs. January 5th, 1986. Sunday. January 3rd, Friday, I was at my cousin's house doing some recording on some cassette tapes. February 7th, 1983. Monday, February 11th, Friday, it rained that day, had pizza from Domino's, pepperoni sausage. December 11th, 1991. Wednesday, December 13th, Friday, I didn't go to work that day. Okay. What is it about Orlando's brain that allows him to retain the things that most of us would, would discard through even the moments of, of the day? And so I think it's very striking to understand the capacity of the brain. If he can remember all of these details, then can all of us remember you know, much more than, than we are on a day-to-day -day basis? Can just one knock on the head make our memory infinite? Orlando, a janitor at Walmart, shows the researchers where the ball hit him. Scientists have tested him often, and it's been proven that on all the weather data after 1979, Orlando has never made a mistake. On October 13th, Saturday, it was cloudy. It had one of those uh, pullover hoods. This part right here was black. You know, it was cloudy, and this girl that I know went through, across the street to the convenience store. She had on white tennis shoes, 
white socks, blue jeans, and a yellow one of them pullover top. And that was October 13th, Saturday, 84, Run DMC, Curtis Blower, and the Fat Boys at the Hampton Coliseum when the people got mugged in the park a lot. Now that's too much stuff to hold it into one brain. We're talking about 20 years ago. So how do you do it? I don't know. So that's on October 15th, it's a Monday. Orlando Sorrell proves that we all have this ability. And that's a profoundly important scientific advance. Not as other people have thought that savants practice in the, you know, constantly day and night, and that's what got it to, the, to the, them to this level, and anyone could practice day and night. No, that's wrong. So firstly was to aim to prove that we all have savant-like skills, but our brain deliberately suppresses them. I'm Ben Gash, an actor, voiceover artist, painter and musician from Berlin. Something in my head is obviously suppressing my inner memory genius. My mental arithmetic is average and I can't remember the weather on the 13th of October 1985. But would I really want to swap a head injury for that? Would you? For this series, I've been employed as the average Joe. I've been pushed into the same scanner as the savants in order to compare us. With the help of magnetic resonance, neurologists have opened up the black box in our brains and discovered that it contains not only one form of memory, but many, built up in layers over the course of evolution. The narrow tube and the hammering noise of the scanner aren't bringing back any good memories for me, though. Although I know that nothing is going to happen to me, my heart is in my throat. And knowing that my MRI data has also been animated in New York and that I can watch my own brain on TV doesn't make me any happier either. That my heart is racing is due to my brainstem. Anxiety instinctively puts my body into alarm mode. Whether rightly so, only the cerebral cortex knows. As the working memory of all thoughts, this is disproportionately large in humans and contains inconceivable amounts of neurons. If I counted all the connections between them, it would take me 32 million years. But my panic in the MRI machine is down to my old mammal brain, called the limbic system. This is our emotional memory, against which even the cortex can't compete, even if it's ever so clever. Our cerebral cortex as the seat of our conscious memory, and that's what it's all about after all, has half a trillion contact points, or synapses. And we know that the memory is coded in synaptic connections. These are the carriers. Every one of the half a trillion synapses can take on maybe ten different active steps. Once more, ten times half a trillion, and you can store everything, even every molecule in space, in each unit. In principle, our memories have an infinite capacity. Everything that, that we experience is recorded, but we don't necessarily have access to it. Uh, uh, unless we have somehow labeled that with an emotion or some kind of special event, or we may remember our, our 70th birthday or, or our uh, 25th wedding anniversary or whatever, those things are stored because we sort of tag those with a little bit of a, a little pop-up ad, so to speak, that says, uh, remember this. Kim Peek has really earned his nickname Kim Pewter. Kim remembers everything as pure, unfiltered data, like a computer does. The real Rain Man knows 2,000 years of calendar dates, all the dialing codes and highway systems in the USA, all the historic dates in the world, and every tune he's ever heard. But he cannot fry an egg or dress himself. He will never have a driving license or a girlfriend. That would just be too much for his brain. Kim is over 50, but still lives with his father Fran in Salt Lake City. Every day, his father dresses him, brushes his teeth, and accompanies him to the city library. Over the years, Kim has read about 12,000 books and hasn't forgotten a single word. 
He has never learnt them by heart. He has simply read them, every book exactly once. There are over 200 boxes worth of books stored on his brain's hard drive. test he gave him eight pages he read them in 53 seconds and two hours later had a 98.7 percent recall including the page numbers so he got them all in order